All right, onto this thing. This thing is wrong for two reasons. One, it's way too long. I finally found a Zuckerman video with this exact same configuration. And when they have the exact same configuration, which is this rod with a tiny little pin right there connected to the wood to make it slide over for the loot or buff, whatever you want to call it. See that? When I found this configuration, this bar only goes halfway along the black key. My bar is longer than the black key. So it sticks beyond, well, you can't tell from this angle, but it's beyond the wood. So see, okay, if I put my finger, well, you're not gonna tell. I have to take my word for it. It's past the wood, I just can't get the right angle. There we go. Maybe, anyway, see how it's past the wood? That's a problem. So it's only supposed to be, only supposed to be the, like this long. So I don't understand why it's long. Also, it's too thick. Remember when I said before, the whole reason I had to shave down my desk to get over this hump was because of this gap? Well, I thought it was because the screws were in the wrong spot. It's not. This is resting on this wood. So when I took the screws out and I tried to get it low enough to be this tight on both sides, see how tight that is? I know there's a huge gap there. It's because this thing is like a sixteenth of an inch too thick. So I can't get rid of the thickness because um, it would, um, well, I just don't have a machine to get rid of the thickness. Plus the screw holes here are already in place. What I could do is dig out this pocket or dig, make a pocket in the wood. And then this would sit lower, but then my screw hole wouldn't line up. I'd have to put a screw like next to it because too close it would lock. So I have to put a screw like right here then have a big nasty ugly hole. But that'd be tighter. But I already fixed the music desk, so the thickness of this doesn't matter. It is now the length. So do I want to take a hacksaw and cut that down and then find something to polish the edges? I have all the right stuff to polish it up and stuff, so it's not sharp. But do I really feel like doing that? I know you all want to see it. on camera but holy cow I am kind of impressed with myself I mean I knew I could do it but even though I knew I could do it sometimes I'm still shocked look at that not only is it polish and everything but the important side the end hmm it looks better on it looks better in real life than camera just have to trust me whoopsies yes okay there so beveled edge beveled corner polished edge smooth as silk. All right, let's reinstall this thing. Alrighty, I'm probably totally being the way of the camera, but because of the wall, I can't put the camera anywhere else. So we are just going to stick it in. Trying to stay out of the way of the camera. This is really awkward. I can't see because I can't get over there. You can probably can't even hear me. I'll try to talk louder. Um, I need a flashlight or something. Can I put this down somewhere? This whatever note. There you are. Okay. I don't know if you can see anything. I hope so. Let's um put that back in place. If you screw it down too tight, obviously it won't move. If you do it too loose, it'll rattle. Look at that. And it is halfway the length of the key. Exactly the length it's supposed to be. And it's all shiny too. Look at that. Look at that. Um, put it a little bit tighter. Yeah, it rattles. Okay, now it doesn't rattle. Okay, it, okay. It's a little snug, but it's all smooth. I could probably put a little bit of oil in. Well, I don't know what the soundboard of this pin block is um, treated with, so I don't really want to put any oil on there. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, there we go. It's stiff, but it works. Let me make sure that it still plays right. And now it will not gouge my lid once I fix my lid. So that being said, 
Put my tools down. And the only thing left to do... Oh, out of the trap. Oh, there you go. The only thing left to do now is put the music desk back and put the lid on and then stain the gouge in the lid. I know earlier I said I was going to do the lid separately, but I had a duh moment. And it'll actually be perfect if I stain it on this because it'll be flat. So let's put it all back together and let's have a look at that lid that's ready to stain. Wow, look at that. I just tried to do a time lapse of putting it together and I realized I wasn't in camera mode. <laughs> so... Anyway, I put that together, put that together. Sorry you missed it. But anyway, look how gorgeous this looks. I've lost my natural light coming in here. You just have to take my word for it. It looked good when it got here, but now it looks 20 times better. That soundboard, even though it's only 85% or so what I want it to be right now, it looks amazing in person. So just imagine, I get rid of the strings, I scrub this down, and then put shiny brand new strings on it. Can you imagine what that'll look like? It'll be a while, that won't be in this video, but if I do, when and if I do, more like when I do, there'll be a video just on that with before and after. But right now, it's still absolutely amazing in person. Oh my gosh, I wish you could see it in person, but YouTube will have to do. You just have to imagine the rest of it yourself. Imagine natural light coming in there. Um, but anyway. It's incredible. It's clean. Even our new, not new, our retrofitted um, brass piece there. Oh, shiny, 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 shiny. As far as this hole, when I looked these up on the internet with a single chorus, some of them had a thing there. And it looped up inside as though it wanted to engage a second chorus, even though there wasn't one. So maybe it was just a dummy lever when it's a single chorus. Or maybe it would also engage, disengage the buff stop from both sides. I don't know. Um, if this were a two chorus, then of course it would engage the second chorus. Usually another eight foot, I guess. You'd think it'd be an eight and a four, but a lot of these had two eights, I guess. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm sure you can do whatever you want. But um, anyway, so that's going to be blank. And there are tons of these too. Even the big double manual ones with blank spots. So... I just want to know, like, if you're in your car and you have a blank cover by your switches, I want to know what was supposed to go there or what options you could have had. So I'll just have to not worry about that. <laughs> but that works. And once I get this stained, it's not going to gouge anymore. So the next thing to do for this video is to get my stain out. We're going to fix that. I don't have this exact color, but it'll be close enough and way better than you see now. And if I do ever want to close the lid, it won't happen again. Because this is now the right size. See that? Supposed, that's what it's supposed to be. It was way out here beyond the black key before. So it's the right size now. So it'll close. Let's get the stain out. Let's fix that. All right, I can't get the camera angle that I want. But um, this will have to do. Hopefully you can hear me okay. I'll raise my voice. I don't have the exact color that I wanted either. But this would be good enough. And... I don't have the brush I was looking for, so we're going to go super old school here and just use a paper towel. <laughs> I mean, this is a legitimate way to stain things. Wipe on, wipe off with paper towel. So we'll let that sit a second. And then I'll wipe it off. Then I'll do it again. There we go. I'm not sure what that looks like to you. But that actually looks the same color to me. Oh, wow. Okay, so on camera, it's super obvious, right? But in person, it blends right in. Just like my microphone will pick up overtones that make the piano sound out of tune, but you can't hear them in person. That's crazy. Huh. That is really interesting. Well, since I'm here, let me kind of touch up all of this here. Because why not? You can see the wood is gouged because I didn't fill it or anything, but the color is perfect. So when you stand off like over here and you can't see the gouge, it looks perfectly brand new. Yeah, if I stand over here, it looks perfect. I can't believe on camera it stands out so much. That's crazy how that works. That's perfect. That's just perfect in person. Let me see if I move this here what that looks like. No, it still stands out. 
weird it stands out on camera but i can't see that from here in person if i look at it that's wild well i mean when that dries it's gonna look even on camera look fine but in person it's already gone that's so crazy anyway i have to take my word for it okay so that is everything right this is my four strings so there'll be a quick edit for you and we'll be putting on four strings my first time doing strings so we'll enjoy that together of course i am getting them with the hitch pins already looped but so be it i still have to do you know this side so anyway quick edit we'll put in four strings together and then we'll tune it up you can laugh at my stringing and tuning um i have to wait like a week though but for you just a quick edit i'll see you in three two one and we're actually going to talk about quills instead <laughs> <laughs> Even though I just said we're going to put the strings on. My strings did show up. They showed up a few minutes ago. And I want them to acclimate a little bit to the house. Because even though they're steel, they were out in literally 27 degree weather for who knows how long. So I don't want to stretch them quite yet. So in the meantime, we're going to talk about quills. And why are we suddenly going to talk about quills? Well, as I record this, it's like almost a week later than the previous clip you just saw. And I've been playing the harpsichord quite a bit in between even with missing strings and i'm learning to play as a harpsichord i'm not gonna get into it in this video too much but playing the harpsichord and playing the piano are completely different instruments it's like if you tell a flautist to play the recorder like they would a flute it's not gonna work it'll work but it'll sound ugly same with the harpsichord if you play harpsichord like a piano it's gonna sound ugly so i've been learning to play as a harpsichordist not as a pianist who's playing harpsichord so because of that, and I'm using the lighter touch and, you know, traditional fingerings and things, I'm noticing some of these quills are, they need attention, I should say. Um, you can't see them because I got the music rack on, but um, I'm going to show you in a minute what I mean. But um, some of these quills need attention. When I was playing a hard like a piano, you don't notice, other than the bam, 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 bam of me hitting the keys. So playing it as a harpsichord, though, you really notice, because when you play with harpsichord, you use your finger, you use gravity to play. You don't play like this. You use gravity to play. And with gravity and quills that are not perfect, you feel it. So here we go. You are not going to be able to feel this because you're watching the video, but you should be able to hear it. Listen to what happens when I play with harpsichord technique. I'm not even going to tell you what note. See if you can tell what it is. I'm going to try to move the phone so I can see what I'm doing here. Just just listen for a second. Do you hear how the G was too fast? And why is that? Because you rest, you play on the string. You play with your fingers, you know, ready to strike the notes, but the quill for this G is too short, so it goes down too easy. I'll do it with one finger and you can see and hear. See, it goes down without any resistance. Well, these have resistance before it plucks. And so it's too short, so it's just grazing the string. So see, I don't even need to try and it goes down. With these, I can go like this a little bit, but this just goes down every time. This one was like that, and I fixed it a little bit by pushing the quill in through the back because I don't have any other quills. But now I have the opposite problem. Now too much hits the string, and listen to this when I play. Here how it's delayed because it takes way more work to push it down. These I can push down with gravity. These I actually have to push so there's a delay. It's also much louder. Listen. Not sure if the camera picks that up, but that's way, way louder. So this has too much quill. This doesn't have enough. Um, we're going to try to fix these without quills. I'll show you. What I'm going to try to do. Then the third one we're going to look at um, is this C sharp. Look at this. It only goes down if I go way deep into the into the felt. And I know early in the video I said it's not the quills or the jacks because when I swapped them, it was the same problem. It's because I swapped them with another one that was long. This one is so long that it has to lift the string all the way up and then it barely gets around the string. So this one needs to be shortened a lot compared to this. Like, can you see the moving when it plays? 
goes all the way down and pushing into the felt to get that. So, um, so we're going to shorten this one. We're going to try to lengthen this one. I'll show you how, because I was able to lengthen this one, but now this one's too long. So shorten two of them. Hopefully we can lengthen this one. If not, I'm just going to have to live with it until I get a bag of quills. And some up here were kind of too short too. Oh yeah, that's the key we talked about. Was it this video or the previous video? How the um, the glide guide rails are bent. My piano tech said he has a tool for that. I wasn't going to take him up on it, but maybe I will. Maybe I'll bring the key, the keyboard tray upstairs when my piano gets tuned and he can bend them straight for me. Because it's been kind of goofy. Anyway, um, some of these. Which one was it? Oh, that's the missing string. That one. That one's kind of short. That takes no effort. That one's good. That one's good. That one's too much. That's missing string. This one too. So this one and the B, those two should also be done. But for the rest of this video, we're just going to look at these three super fast. And then I think that means the stringing and tuning video is going to have to be in the next one. Because I don't want these to be too long. So let me set up um, some stuff and we will try to take care of those three as quickly as we can. It's my first time doing it though. So maybe quickly isn't the right way to say it. But we'll see what we can do. All right, we'll see how well the camera, the phone can pick this up. C-sharp is this one right here. So if you look, I don't know if you can tell. Let me see if I can focus it. Um, yeah, maybe you can tell if your device is big enough. But you can see how the plectrum goes way beyond, way beyond the string. Like we're talking at least the 30 second, 230 seconds, so a sixteenth of an inch, which is enormously far. All the other ones don't go beyond the string. This one goes way beyond the string. Um, but it's not as simple as just chopping it off either. You gotta shape it a little bit. Um, if you move over to the G, where's this one? That one, you can see, maybe you can't, but you can see that some of the tip of the quill is broken off. So only half of the tip is hitting it. That's why there's no resistance there. Um, and it goes down too easy. There is, might be some room to scooch it forward, but then again, we gotta shape it. Then the F that I changed, or that I moved, so I squished it, I pushed it forward a little bit, and it's actually not sticking beyond the string. It's the length it's supposed to be, but I didn't voice it, so there's too much tip hitting the string, and that's why. See how much louder it is? Maybe hear how much louder it is. So there's too much tip. So it's the right length. I just gotta shape the tip, maybe, because if I cut the tip, it'll be too short again. So shape that tip. See if we can push this one in and shape it. This one is too long, so I gotta cut that down and shape it. So let's see if I can figure out how to do this because I don't have any quills. So if I screw this up, I'm gonna be missing notes. So let's see what we can do. So I'm gonna do my best to stay out of the way. Sorry if it just got louder, but the microphone part of the phone is literally against my face almost because I'm trying to see what I'm doing. So what you're supposed to do, people do this regularly, they'll have a voicing block, right? We have a block of wood that is the size and shape of what you want to do. So if you want a certain shape, the top of the block is that shape. So I'm not cutting it straight down. I'm cutting it, I'm gonna cut an angle like this ever so slightly and hope to goodness that um, I don't cut off too much. So do not try this at home. I am just wanna see what I can do here. So we're gonna cut it down. And an angle, just triple checking things. Oh yeah, see some of these are just cut, they're not voiced, they're just cut off, which is fine. And cut at an angle, ever so slightly. Of course, they don't have the damper felt back in yet, I'll do that in a minute. I just wanna see if it plays better. Oh my gosh, it's so much better. Oh my gosh, that worked. Look it, look when I play. Look at that. Of course, there's no damper yet, but. I think I can still, I think I can still do more. Let me think about this. I'm not gonna waste your time. I'm gonna think about this for a minute. I'll be right back. Well, I did it. I got it in there. I got the damper back perfectly too, but um, it feels perfect. <laughs> actually feels better than the rest of them in this area. That's the best feeling one of all these now. 
Okay, well that was definitely a success. And I got the damper felt back in there, which was hard because normally they have the egg notes on a roll and you cut it. I was able to get back in. Okay, so first one was success. That one I knew would be the easiest. Now let's move to this G. And what was wrong with the G? It goes down too easily. Let's pull this out. I'm looking through the phone to try to look at it. So I'm hoping we can do, which you probably can't see. I gotta take my glasses off. Oh my gosh, I can't see anything. Um, if I were to do this, like the whole thing, I'll get a jeweler's loop up for right now. I'll just have to do, okay, see how a little bit sticks out? I'm gonna push a little bit in. That's what he did to the F. And we'll see if that takes care of it. Okay, well, I end up pushing a lot, so we're going to have to definitely shape that one because now it's going to be too tight. Sorry, I'm looking through the phone while I while I do this because my glasses are off. I can't see anything. Oh, there. Now let's see how it feels here. Ooh, hear that awful sound, though? Listen. So now our ring's funny. So it feels, I think it actually feels perfect. Let me do that again. I'll give you this view here. Whoops, <laughs> I'm trying to play through the phone again. Okay, it feels perfect. It feels absolutely perfect, but it sounds horrible. Um, which would make sense because I changed the shape of it, right? The different parts hitting it. So I'm gonna do is look at it carefully. I'm not gonna to try to bother doing it through the phone. I'm gonna look at it carefully. If I fix it, I'll tell you what I did. If I didn't fix it, I'll admit it, but I'm gonna do my best here, give me a minute. It sounds like the other notes around it. So continuity is totally there. So not awesome, awesome, but way better than a Y than it matches the others. So here we go, Let's, here's a sound sample here. Of course, with just the iPhone mic, but you know, you get the idea. Totally even, it feels perfect, and it sounds like the other notes around it, it doesn't stand out or anything. Let me try that again. I try not to play like a piano, let me play like a harpsichord this time. Um, That's piano. <laughs> it's hard to like remember I'm playing a harpsichord. Oh man, now I'm noticing all these different things. All these different things. Okay, moving on. Now to fix this one, the F sharp. That I made way. Oh, listen how loud that is compared to the others. I gotta fix that. Let me see what I can do. In fact, I want to play for you one more time up close so you can hear how much louder it is. It's not crazy. Of course, I kind of wish they were all like that because they feel a lot heavier. This one feels heavier and it sounds louder, but maybe that's not better. It's just, you know what I mean? I'm just used to the volume. That's the right one. Yeah. I'm just used to the volume and, you know, weight of a piano. So what I'm going to do you can't see, but I'm going to do the same thing I did to that C sharp. Cut off the tippity tip and shape it a little bit and see if it feels good and sounds good. Wish me luck. All right, I think I got it. And then I'll tell you my process that I used. This was by far the most difficult. This one took a long time off camera. Um, so let's first see how it feels. You have to pretend that you can feel through my fingers here. Just by watching how I play, it should feel even now. It's a teeny, 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 tiny bit heavier. Just a little bit, and I'll tell you why I'm not doing more in a second here. Let's do that again. It mostly matches. You might notice it is a little louder still. But not nearly as much. So it's not nearly as loud and it's not nearly as stiff as it was. 
Um, what happened was I trimmed some off, didn't do anything at all, trimmed a little bit more. It was perfect, but I wanted to, I'm like, I already did two successfully. Let's see if we can make it even better. And then I thinned it on the sides and totally screwed it up. So I had to shove more, I had to shove more through and start all over. And this is my compromise. It's still a little louder. It's still a little heavier to push or stiffer to push, but it's still way, way, way better than it was. And I'm going to leave it at that. If I'm going to do any more of these, I'm going to try to like comprise some, come up with some kind of voicing block. But considering these first two were perfect, I know this doesn't sound perfect, but it blends in. That one was perfect, my first try. Of course, beginner's luck, go figure. Um, it's also the hardest to screw up. Um, considering it works, I didn't screw anything up, and I don't have any spares, and I have no idea what I'm doing other than, you know, watching YouTube videos, <laughs> which is, you know, I call it YouTube certified. I think I did a good enough job. It's playable. No one would ever know that this note is not perfect if I didn't say it, right? If I played in context, but I keep playing notes that aren't there. You know it's there, I know it's there, but if I don't say anything, no one's gonna know it's there. Right, sounds just fine. You can hear me th 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 thud because I'm doing the piano thing again. It should be harpsichord thing. There we go. Did you notice it sounds cleaner, clearer, and you don't hear the thuds when I play it like harpsichord? So anyway, I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead because right now I'm barely ahead from where I started. So I'm gonna quit here with the uh, quills. If you want to see me restring, not restring, if you want to see me fix, replace the four missing strings and tune this up for the very first time that I've tried to tune it, you're going to have to subscribe and watch the next video because this is plenty long enough and get ready for some strings and some tuning and I'll see you next time.